Thank you for joining me. This work was undertaken as part of an Australian National Health and Medical Research Council grant for the Evidence Translation in Allied Health Project. My conference registration is funded by Monash Health. Despite evidence for pelvic floor muscle training to prevent or treat postnatal incontinence, there have been no studies evaluating the cost effectiveness of different models of care for this. Such an evaluation is needed for health service planning. We aimed to assess the cost effectiveness of models of care for pelvic floor muscle training to prevent or treat postnatal incontinence. We reviewed studies in the 2017 Cochrane Review by Woodley and colleagues and grouped them according to models of care. To do this, we needed enough information to identify the setting, timing and target populations and included studies with outcomes for postnatal urinary or fecal incontinence. We then performed meta-analyses for each model of care. For models of care that had statistically significant results, we analysed costs. We used information from included studies and expert clinicians to determine the number and duration of supervised sessions. We calculated consumer costs, including travel, parking, and a session fee of $10, health service costs, including room hire, staff wages and consumables, and society costs, including lost productivity from women's sick leave to attend appointments. All costs were calculated in Australian dollars. Using the number needed to treat from our meta-analyses, we calculated the cost per case of incontinence prevented or cured. Today we'll be focusing on the health service costs. We compared costs between different models using this incremental cost effectiveness formula. We included 17 studies for meta-analysis. Four models of care representing 11 studies had statistically significant results. These were individual antenatal training or group-based antenatal training to prevent urinary incontinence, individual postnatal training for mixed prevention and treatment of urinary incontinence, or for mixed prevention and treatment of faecal incontinence. Individual antenatal training included five 30-minute sessions with an experienced physiotherapist. The health service cost to deliver this was $124 per woman, and the cost to prevent one case of urinary incontinence was $768. Group-based antenatal training included one individual session with an experienced physiotherapist and 12 group sessions with a junior physiotherapist. Cost depended on the number of women per group session. In this graph, on the x-axis, we have the number of women per group, and on the y-axis, we have the cost. Positive means a cost, negative means a saving. If we look at the health service line in orange, we can see that the health service cost to prevent one case of urinary incontinence was $646 if there were five women per group, and the health service made a saving of $14 per case prevented with eight women, and a saving of $437 per case prevented with 13 women. Individual postnatal training included five sessions. The health service cost to deliver this was $124 per woman, and the cost to prevent or cure one case of urinary incontinence was $1,970. Individual postnatal training for prevention and treatment of faecal incontinence included six sessions. The health service cost was $148 per woman, and the cost to prevent or cure one case of faecal incontinence was $2,784. These are the comparisons that we undertook for urinary incontinence. Individual antenatal training for prevention to individual postnatal training for mixed prevention and treatment. Group-based antenatal training for prevention to individual postnatal training for mixed prevention and treatment. And group-based to individual antenatal training for prevention. Because faecal incontinence outcomes were only reported for one model of care, we were unable to undertake comparisons for this. Preventing one case of urinary incontinence with individual antenatal training was more cost effective than preventing or curing one case with individual postnatal training by $1,202. This graph shows group-based antenatal training compared to individual postnatal training for urinary incontinence. From the health service perspective, 
you can see that the orange line drops below zero once the group has four women, indicating that with four or more women per group, group-based training for prevention is more cost-effective than individual postnatal training for mixed prevention and treatment. For group-based compared to individual antenatal training for prevention, the orange line drops below zero once there are five women, indicating that with five or more women per group, group-based is more cost-effective than individual antenatal training. When considering urinary incontinence, individual antenatal training for prevention is more cost-effective than individual postnatal training for prevention and treatment. Group-based antenatal training for prevention is more cost-effective than individual postnatal training if at least four women attend. And group-based antenatal training is more cost-effective than individual antenatal training for prevention if at least five women attend and the service charges $10 per session. However, postnatal training has the additional known benefit of preventing or treating faecal incontinence. Studies are needed to assess antenatal training to prevent or cure faecal incontinence. Pelvic floor training to prevent or cure postnatal incontinence is a low cost, clinically effective intervention that can be provided in a variety of models of care. Based on this evidence, all continent women should be offered pelvic floor training in pregnancy. And because group-based training can deliver cost savings, if there are enough participants, group-based training could be offered to all pregnant women at no extra cost to the health service. All women with incontinence postnatally should be offered individual pelvic floor training. We're not doing this in routine care, and this is something we need to address. Further details can be found in our publication in the Journal of Physiotherapy. Thank you.